Hey, Otto. Maria, she how's breaks down. You were saying you were commenting about Sonia Shanova's quite marvelous uh, contralto here. Yes, what were you yes. saying about it in hearing this? What were you saying about it to her? To her? You know, during this, during her... That's beautiful. Yeah. <laughs> no, you're talking about a certain, something more, about the manner in which it was done, oh, Sonia. You mean, you see, what I'm talking about is when you sing mixed into the chest voice, it doesn't have to be guttural. Ugh. That's what it's I mean. Al it's always, always mixed. mixed. Always mixed. That's and it's so still, beautiful. And still that's chest so beautiful voice in and that. mixed Oh, chorus. that's what you meant by mixed. That's, mixed. that's what I was yeah. asking. Yeah. Yeah. Mixed with that. Yeah, yeah, but never the overtones. that false you know, uh, contralto when they push down. down. Yeah. That's why some, oh, I, we won't talk about it, but some of the great contralos this year, mezzo Look. contralos, are already ruined because Cosotto. they've been doing that. What is it? What is it? What? Cosotto, when she breaks down completely. Well, why is it, she was naming one of them, why is it uh, Maria or, or Sonia, uh, Sharnova? That's fine. Russa? No, why is Just it? Just the first name. No, why is it, okay, but why is it that they're breaking down. What is it they're doing wrong? Well, they're trying to get a big, rich tone, and they're closing off that freedom of throat that should keep that tone at the mask mm. all the time, and therefore it keeps its resonance. But if you suddenly let it go down, you've narrowed your throat and you've lost the resonance no. and the overtone. Madam Chernova, you are still teaching. I am. Yeah, you are still. And I yeah. love it. Me now, too. Do you, um, Madam Hussain, oh. you are teaching too, both yes. of you. So what I find very moving, by the way, and delightful about this get-together here is you two admire and respect one another, but also... I know so many eyes, but one is just... Yeah. Do you remember, uh, you remember how that phrase went in German? How'd that go in German? A thousand Sterne sehe ich funkeln. Nein, tausend Sterne... Stehen im Dunkeln, doch nur eines, einen ah, sehe ich von. That's the one. That's the one. That's the one.
That's you. beautiful. Thank you. Mm -hmm. It's a yes. gorgeous music. No, it did the voice. Yeah, okay. This mm -hmm. was about 1927, too, around there? Oh, but no, that was later. I think later. that was 32. 32, mm -hmm. but so some almost half century ago. Oh, yeah. Yeah. everything dates back. You yeah. made, so you, you, you sang the two Strausses, yeah. Richard yeah. and Johann. And you know, <laughs> Richard had a, was a great admirer of Johann Strauss. Oh, really? He was once asked by somebody who didn't know much music. Oh, you composed the Fledermouse? <laughs> and he says, unfortunately not. Really? <laughs> and the, the guy who did De Rosen Cavalier and yeah. Salome. And he, he said, he, he, unfortunately, unfortunately not. <laughs> I was thinking, Sonia Chernova, you worked, aside from Flachstadt, you and Husa both did, the, the, uh, you worked with Raisa and with Muzio? Raisa Muzio, John Charles Thomas, and Falstaff. I was Dame Quickly. You were Amneris with, with, with Muzio's Muzio. Aida. Oh. That was a jump in. I came down to the rehearsal, and I hadn't looked at the score in three months. But as I say, when everything I worked with Madame Weinshank, everything was there. Uh -huh. And I knew what I would do if I could remember it. And I got up on the stage, I was called to to substitute because yeah. Serena Van Gordon was oh, Serena not Van Gordon well. Was, uh, and Maris it was for one it. performance on a New Year's Eve and they s <laughs> called me from, in five minutes I was up on the stage and I couldn't remember one word of the first act. I, uh, I was absolutely <laughs> blind. Uh -huh. But, and Muzio was to sing and Formiki, you know, all those. Cesare Formiki. And Charles Mar he was uh, Marshall, yeah. Charles Marshall was the uh, Ranames, mm. and by the second act, I'd gone to my dressing room and looked it over, and I was all right. Mm -hmm. And Muzio said, now, Sharnova, how do you want me to stand? I can do whatever you want. I said, Madame Muzio, I've seen your performance. I know that I'm going to do the thing that you're doing. Mm -hmm. I know mm -hmm. what to mm -hmm. do. I'm all right now, I said, because I've looked at the score, and it's all come back. Mm. I was so blocked mm. to think... I didn't sing it that next night, and Morin's only was the conductor. And in the last act, there are two sections of it. Amneris has a big dramatic section oh, with sure. the Radames <laughs> and with uh, the Grand Prix. And uh, Morin's only put down the baton. This was the dress rehearsal for the next night. And he put down the baton, and I hadn't finished. I said, Maestro, I has st still have the scene with Rodemais. Yeah. I don't know whether it was Rodemais. He said, I'm not worried. And that was my rehearsal. Uh -huh. <laughs> but I didn't sing yeah. it the next night. But when we went on tour, yeah. I got to sing it. You did? Yeah. And I sang it in San Francisco and in Los Angeles with Muzio, we have pictures to show. Yeah. She, we were all out on uh -huh. tour and had a wonderful time. And she wrote uh, her, my picture of her, uh, she autographed a picture to me, she, but my beautiful Amneris. Muzio, we really had a wonderful Muzio time. Muzio to work with must have been interesting. She was beautiful. She, you didn't get close to her, mm. but that moment, yeah. this was, of course, for mm. the whole performance yeah. sake. If I had to jump in, she wanted to be sure that she and would cooperate with Matt, me. Have yeah. you ever had a similar experience, Madame Husa? This experience of suddenly jumping into a role? Oh, yes. Yeah. Oh, oh yes. One does it yeah. all oh, the time. Yes. So what, you have to be oh, yes. so equipped, so prepared. Is that I had, when I started out, 14 parts well studied. So I was able to take it up any time. Just one it. rehearsal or without no, it. May I tell about my great opportunities, though, in New York? Please. Because I think that was jumping in where <laughs> angels would fear to tread. And I certainly have done that all my life. But I had two years in France and three years in Italy. I had sung all Azucenas. Yeah, yeah. Favorita was one of my roles and all. The last engagement I was supposed to have was two months before I was to come back to America. Five years in Europe was enough. And the family thought I ought to come home and earn some money. So I had two months, and I thought I was going to put in a great many roles, Italian roles, new ones, Ulrike and Mask Ball and all. And the thing fell through. There was a real scandal. And I came back to Milan. I was brokenhearted. And I met a Viennese coach in Milano. We were, I had been working with him a little, and he said, you know, if you have two months left, 
I think you're a Wagnerian singer. Mm -hmm. Here I'd never mm -hmm. done mm -hmm. anything mm -hmm. in Wagner. Yeah. But he said, I hear in your interpretation, your voice, Wagner. Why don't you go to Berlin those two months and I'll give you the names of co repetiteurs and get yourself ready? And I did. And I learned Fricke in Walküre and Waltraute in Getterdämmerung, yes. which I had never seen. Yeah. And a number of a number of leader. I worked with Rauchheisen, young leader. Oh yes. And then and you came back to America. Yeah, there was no engagement for me, although Gatti Casaza had been interested the year before. Gatti Casaza was there was nothing the for me uh, of the Metropolitan. Mm -hmm. And Chicago had three big important contraltos. They didn't need me, so I was preparing for concerts and temple singing and church singing. I said, well, I've got to get something to do. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And I met in the coach's studio, Juliette Lippe, a dramatic soprano, an American from New York, who had already been engaged by the German opera company. The impresario was on the water. This was October and January we were to open, they were to open in New York. Lippe heard me do the repliques, the cues for her, for Waltraute and her Brunhilde. She said, we have no Brunhilde, Waltrautes in America like that. You must sing for Knoch. And I, the next day, I sang for Knoch. He said, do you know Brangena? You won't get a chance to do it because Metzger Laderman is coming oh, over. Yeah. And she will do the few we're doing, only seven, seven, we're only doing seven performances. Uh, performances. performances. We're going on, mm. on tour for seven states or something. But anyway, do you know Brangena? I, I lied. You said yes. And it's a good lie. Sure. I said I knew a little bit in mm -hmm. Italian, mm -hmm. but of course it would be different. I went out and bought a score. I went over to Zoller, the coach, mm -hmm. and worked with him. I must have not slept that night. The next morning I worked with him again. Oh, Knoch said, bring the first act tomorrow. Oh, yes, and there's plenty. I <laughs> came with Brangain in the first, first act. act. He sent me to Hurok. Hurok was the agent for the American singers, and I was to do it. Metzger Lotterman sent a cable that she could not sing opening night, so we were doing a double cycle in New York. I was learning in three months, less than three months, the whole Wagner Ring. I was to do the second cycle of all those operas I had never seen. I seen Valkyr only. And all of a sudden I'm doing Brangena. There was. How did I do it? They, the write-ups, I've been looking over... By the way, I've seen some of yeah. the reviews, and they've been raved. Yeah, and but that was the second year. You're speaking of your brain, gain yeah. and well, matching anyway, Schumann yeah. Hanks any time. Yeah. Yeah. But uh, uh, no, Herbert well, Pizer in New York... You the voices. Mm. But that... Uh, Knoch, yeah. much better. Knoch yeah. said... Sharnova. Believe yeah. me, he, he, Knoch, wait well, till you see yeah. the things at the uh, yeah. Chicago, at the uh, symphony. They've gotten all my yeah. para, my memorabilia. So there it was. So they, but I jumped in as Brangena opening night, but they mentioned the fact that I knew how to change the potion from the poison <laughs> to the... That showed the audience what I was doing, and Pizer said, very few contraltos do it. Why don't they look yeah. and see a yeah. well, stage The thing record. that's so amazing about this, of course, Certainly. is Chernobyl but learning at the last... No, you know what you hear? so important. You know, I'm thinking about the richness in, in both of your lives and how many stories to tell. <laughs> Indeed, more. But suppose we hear now, Sharnova, another Russian folk song. Oh, my. From that time again. Good. We do Rai. It says, Back in the mountains there is a road between two lakes. On your cap you have a good beaver. <laughs> do Rai. Hurry to your sab Sabira and tell her I, you love her. Oh, <laughs> 
thinking of how voice. I thought of yeah. Louise Homer. You know, it's interesting. Sharnova said she did Asuchena on Snow. Yeah. I'm thinking of. So I thought of Louise Homer. I thought, why did Asuchena you'd be? Oh, that I gypsy in that yeah. class. Yeah. Frida La Vampa. You must oh, have been something. I had yeah. great success in yeah. Italy. My Asuchena. Yeah. Yeah. I was busy all the time. You know, yeah. we're talking to two richly rewarded singers, artists who are, I'm quite certain, excellent teachers today. And this is Wagner Week. And these memories, all we touched upon really is so little. What's the, what did you want to say, Sonia? I, I wanted to just tell what Waltraute's narrative means. Ah. Uh, just a bit of it, mm -hmm. I won't give That's much. Right. But Waltraute is the great role that I loved most in The Ring. And she comes to Brunhilde begging her to give up The Ring or the Valhalla, there will be no more. And she describes Wotan's great unhappiness because he has ostracized Brunhilde because she helped in these... Uh, there, were, there was a lot of trouble there in Valkyra. So Valtrauta comes to Brunhilde... A lot of trouble in the whole Nibelung. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but she, Valtrauta comes to Brunhilde and describes Wotan in order to get Brunhilde to give up the ring. And she says, So sitzt er, sagt kein Wort, auf ihrem Sitze stumm und ernst, des Speere Splitter fest in der Faust, hol das Äpfel, rührt er nicht an. Dich, o oh Schwester, beschwor ich nun, was du vermagst, vollendest dein Mut, Ende der ewigen Qual. You know what's marvelous in hearing so in general? You cut it a little bit, you know. She cut it. Oh, yeah, but the she thing that's it. amazing, yeah. and I noticed you, uh, Husa, Maria, you were looking at her, she must have been a marvelous actress. Well, I should say is. Sure. An actress. Well, that's the thing, both of you. The idea of sure. the uh, you know that meaning, the word. So we come... And you are. Yeah, of course, that's so we the come... The person. We come, of course, yeah. to the great leader singer. Sonia, it is ende des ewigen Des ewigen. Oh, you would think about a certain word. I was thinking, Maria Husa and uh, Sonia Sharnova, we're going to end with the voice of one of the great leader singers of our time, and one of the great teachers, and most intelligent of singers, Lotte Lehmann. Uh -huh, yeah. And though she may not have done uh, Isolde on stage, there's a recording of her doing Liebestod. Yeah. But before, as we hear her to sign off and end yeah. uh, this program for Wagner Week, thoughts about Lehmann and what it is she teaches and taught. Shonova. Well, I sang with her. And then, when I heard her recitals one spring, 1945, three recitals almost within a month, the voice wasn't anymore what it had been, but she put things into songs. She lived every poem so beautifully that when she'd finish a song, all you could do was hold your breath. Yeah. And I said, I haven't had enough work on leader. I'd been in Berlin two months and went over, a, gone over a lot of leader. But I wanted to put something more into it because I was teaching already. That was 1945 and I started downtown in 44. And I said, I must know more. And I went out. Yeah. to Santa Barbara mm -hmm. and yeah. worked yeah. with Lottie Lehmann Virginia. five yeah. weeks. Yeah. Oh, really? And when we finished, she said, Sharnova, you should go on another concert tour. Really? Now mm -hmm. do yeah. leader. Mm -hmm. I said, I've had it. I want to stay put. I'm teaching and I love it and I'm not going. But what is, isn't it about Lehmann? The words, the lyrics yes. to her as well as me. Something else over and beyond yes. what is on paper. Huh? That's right. right. Yeah. yeah. And yeah. that's what yeah. I feel the our pe young people don't know. feeling was wonderful with her expression. And yeah. so let us yeah. end this program with Lehmann and uh, Isolde's Liebestot and Sonia Sharnova yeah. and Maria Husagreva. Thank you very much indeed and uh, for being the artist you are. <laughs>